Hello and welcome to the Climbing Mount Fuji channel. Today, we're going to talk about what to wear when climbing Mount Fuji. By watching this video, you'll understand the following points. 1. Get an idea of the clothing for climbing Mount Fuji. 2. Understand the points to note about clothing for climbing Mount Fuji. 3. Be prepared with the right clothing for climbing Mount Fuji. On this channel, we share useful information for people who have never climbed a mountain or beginners who are planning to climb Mount Fuji. Please watch till the end. First of all, this isn't just about climbing Mount Fuji, but about the basics of clothing for climbing any mountain. The type of clothing you'll need to wear will depend on the situation. Whether you're walking, taking a break, or when it gets windy at the summit, you'll need to change your clothing based on the weather, time, and location. Therefore, it's rare to wear the same clothing from the start of the climb until you descend. Mount Fuji, in particular, is high in altitude, which means the impact of sunlight is greater than on flat ground. The weather can change quickly from summer to winter-like conditions. That's why it's necessary to prepare clothing that can withstand weather from summer to winter. Instead of preparing separate summer and winter clothing, you'll need to layer thinner clothes to adjust to changing temperatures. Here, we'll explain the clothing based on a typical two-day itinerary with a night stay at a mountain hut, which many climbers of Mount Fuji choose, aiming to see the sunrise. First, from the start of the climb to the end of the first day's itinerary, when you reach the mountain hut, we'll first explain assuming the weather is sunny. The important point to keep in mind is to wear clothes that are easy to move in. Choosing clothes made of stretchable fabric is crucial. For example, trekking pants have the benefit of being stretchy and not inhibiting leg movement. Next, you should choose materials that dry quickly. For this reason, synthetic fabrics like polyester are preferable. Denim and cotton fabrics should be avoided as they take time to dry when wet, leading to a decrease in body temperature. Additionally, due to the high altitude, the sunlight is strong, so you should opt for clothing that can shield you from the sun. Let's take a look at an image of the specific clothing. Here is the ideal look. Choose a shirt and pants that are easy to move in and quick to dry. Also, to avoid energy loss due to sunlight, choose a hat with a wide brim, and even if you wear short sleeves, match it with functional tights or a long sleeve quick dry shirt to prevent direct skin exposure. Here, we have matched a skirt and half pants, but you can also choose trekking pants that reach to the ankles. As mentioned at the beginning, this is the lightest clothing for climbing Mount Fuji in sunny weather. If the weather is cloudy or the temperature is low, even at the fifth station, the temperature can be like autumn in Tokyo, so you may need to wear a fleece or rainwear from the start. There are also cases when it may start raining from the beginning. So, let's check out the clothing for when it's raining. The most important thing to remember is always to be prepared for rain, no matter how sunny it is. Some people believe that because they only climb when it's sunny, they don't need rain gear, but this is a big mistake. Even if it's sunny at the base of the mountain, it can be raining at the top. Mountain weather can change rapidly, so it's essential to anticipate sudden weather changes. For instance, rain gear not only serves as protection against rain but also as cold weather clothing on Mount Fuji. Always remember to bring your rain gear. Many people have a rain cover for their backpacks, but you shouldn't over rely on it. Consider it as a simple rain countermeasure. To protect items like extra shirts and socks from getting wet, even when your backpack is covered, place them inside a bag before putting them in your backpack. When choosing a bag, a Ziploc bag is preferable to a plastic bag from a convenience store because the latter can be noisy and annoying at a mountain hut. Furthermore, make good use of gaiters when it's raining. Gaiters are a type of gear that you wear over your hiking boots to prevent small rocks from getting inside. They also prevent you from stepping on the cuffs of your rain pants and keep your feet warm. However, there is a different way to wear them when it's raining. We recommend letting the cuffs of your rain pants hang over the gaiters. If you wear them like on a sunny day, water running down your rain pants will get inside the gaiters and eventually inside your boots. To prevent this, let the cuffs hang over the gaiters when it's raining. Here's an overall image of what you should look like during rainy weather. Rain on Mount Fuji doesn't just fall from above. It can also be driven sideways or even upwards by the wind. Therefore, rain gear usually has adjustable collars and sleeves, and the hood is designed to fit closely around your face. Don't just put on your rain gear, tighten the cuffs, hem, and hood to prevent water from getting inside. Temperatures can drop to around 5 degrees Celsius before dawn at the summit, and it feels even colder due to the strong wind. This can feel like the middle of winter if you're from Tokyo. For those who want to see the sunrise at the summit, the coldest time of the day, midnight, is when you'll be climbing. So it's never too much to be prepared for freezing temperatures. Therefore, warm clothing is essential for climbing Mount Fuji. 
It's not practical to bring the kind of winter clothes you wear in town. Mountain-specific warm clothing is much more convenient. Down jackets, for instance, are compact, warm, and often use high-quality down. It's also handy to have lightweight fleece. What's most important is wind protection. Try to expose as little skin as possible. This is where your rain gear comes into play. Beginners often think they don't need rain gear if it's not raining, but in reality, it's often used as cold weather and wind-resistant clothing in the mountains. Rain gear is the most important item, whether it's for rain or cold protection. The most challenging part of the descent is dealing with dust and sand. On a rainy day or just after it's rained, the dust isn't too bad, but on sunny days, it can be quite bad, especially in August when the soil is very dry. So, bring a mask. It doesn't have to be a high-quality mask, any leftover masks from the COVID-19 pandemic or pollen allergy season would work. A towel or bandana could also be used, but masks that don't slip off are the most convenient. Also, bring sunglasses. They're especially important for people who wear hard contact lenses. I once climbed Mount Fuji wearing hard contact lenses but forgot my sunglasses, and it was awful. I had to keep my eyes closed the whole time because they were so painful and couldn't make any progress. Sunglasses are a must-have for people wearing contact lenses. Even for people not wearing contact lenses, getting dust in your eyes is painful. Regardless of whether you wear contact lenses or not, always bring sunglasses. While it's not clothing, having trekking poles during the descent is beneficial. Beginners might wonder if they're really necessary, but everyone always ends up saying they were glad they brought them. They come in handy during the descent, so be sure to prepare them. One clothing detail that beginners often overlook is socks. It's not so much forgetting to wear socks, but rather, making incorrect choices when picking them out. In mountaineering, you'll be walking for long hours. Even in the most comfortable and broken-in shoes, blisters can easily form. Therefore, it's necessary to enhance the fit between your feet and shoes. Here, the thickness of your socks plays a crucial role. Socks for mountaineering need to have substantial thickness. They serve as a cushioning material, so prepare socks that are adequately thick. Lastly, when it comes to mountaineering, you must prepare clothing that can withstand all seasons, from summer to winter. Additionally, basic mountaineering gear is also a necessity. Purchasing all of these can be quite a task. This is where mountaineering gear rental services come into play. There are several companies offering these services, each promoting unique selling points, like affordability or quality. Choose the service that best suits your needs. A word of caution, opt for services that allow you to receive your gear at home before the climb, instead of receiving it at the fifth station of the mountain trail. Carrying all the equipment might seem burdensome, but last-minute preparations right before a climb can be overwhelming for beginners. If you discover something missing, it can be incredibly difficult to compensate for it. Always receive your equipment at home, check if there's anything missing in your gear or clothing, and then proceed with your climbing plans. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions or concerns about climbing Mount Fuji, I would be happy to hear from you in the comments section.